Good. Is it afternoon? It's still good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? So, I'm on Long Island time. I just arrived here. This morning, and there's no traffic, so that's a good one. Um, so this, this morning, we're going to talk a little bit about the people in the paintings, um, especially two wonderful people that we, I, we got to know our great-grandmother a little bit. Unfortunately, we didn't know Harvey McKee that well, but they're our favorite models, and you'll see why in a few minutes. So I call them H and J. <laughs> Always technical difficulties, especially with the teacher teaching 20. Uh, exactly. It was working. So again, I'm Vanessa Canning. I am a, a. I was a retired teacher, but I just recently took something, so I'm back teaching for a, for a couple of weeks. And I'm the researcher in the family. That's. I love social studies. I love art. Um, I love music. And so we all put together this program. But I think I took a little bit more research duties than you and Krista yeah. to the time. Krista, my sister Chris, is not only a lookalike like Grandma Jenny but also carries on many of her artistic talents. Krista is awesome in making quilts and sewing, and you'll see there's a very strong resemblance to her and Grandma Jenny. Um, she, Krista even brought some of Grandma Jenny's quilting work, and you can come up and see a little bit later on. Karen, my sister Karen, I'll let you go with that, Karen. You're the what? So I like to take trips. I'm the adventurer, and I love that nature lover. Um, yes, I'm outside, you know, probably 12 hours a day. Um, so and you're also a retired teacher. And I retired 35 years teaching science, uh, astronomy, geology, uh, and environmental science. So, um, and I've done some work here for the Met. So, um, so it's really cool. To I'll have you here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really nice to, to be able to come and- When I finish this thing. <laughs> So a little bit of family background. This is a picture of my, our mom on the left and our grandfather, Clifford. Now it was his parents who, our great grandparents, were models for Norman Rockwell. Um, so we got a lot of our stories about Norman Rockwell from Clifford. And as you can see, he lived a ripe old age of 92. And when I was doing my research on Grandma Jenny and Granddad um, Harvey, um, I found out that Grandma Jenny, Great Grandma Jenny, also died at 92. So there's some genes in our family that you guys should know about, which is great. Uh, and that's a picture taken on the Grange, um, right behind my, uh, my grandfather and my mom, is the house where Norman Rockwell lived. So Harvey Clarence McKay, Karen, take it So um, he was a loving and kind father, and yes, he only lived to about 64, four, 64. Um, we're not really sure how he died. No, it's but, just after a long illness yeah, in yeah. his obituary. Um, but so he was a neighbor that everyone loved. He literally could give him the shirt off his back, uh, ready to give a helping hand to anyone in need. Um, he was born in the home he spent his life in, uh, and married Jenny in 1904. They worked for Borden Milk Company, which I think still exists today. Um, active community me member in West Arlington, small, small town on the um, southern mm, uh, west side of uh, Vermont. Room 313. Room 313, right. Um, he was a lister, and we have to look that one up because we didn't really know what a lister was. And I guess it would be a real estate agent now. And so a lister would be uh, somebody who praises uh, land or houses for sale. Um, he was also just at the pace for 23 years, which was pretty cool. So I never being heard about any marriages, marriages that he performed, though, did you? No, but, uh, but and maybe his own. Um, he was a charter member of the Vatican Range. And so Roman Rockwell's first art studio. Um, the, the area was surrounded by a beautiful covered bridge across the Baton Hill River. And then you had this open space with a grange where the uh, animals would come, where the people would bring their animals during the season and show them to be sold, bought, and whatnot. There was a church, and then behind there was Norman Ruffles house and a couple other homes that were on the very clean. Like, oh my gosh. Like, just New England, just church. exactly New what, New England, has New anybody ever been up to West Arlington? You have to go. Yes. If you haven't gone, especially this time of year in the fall, it's absolutely beautiful. And um, he was an under sheriff, um, and I'll explain that a little later. But basically, he was a deputy uh, to the sheriff. So, so lots of things. It was a, it was a man of many talents. And one of the things that was quoted in the newspaper when he died was that he was a loving and kind father, a neighbor that everyone had the right to be around, to be proud of. 
always ready to give a helping hand. And you'll see that hand, that word hand comes in in a little bit in one of these paintings. So this is uh, the house that Norman Rockwell uh, raised his sons in until 1953. And so um, people, I remember growing up, going up to the Carter Bridge, mm -hmm. but maybe we would go there and other people live there. Now it's, it's, um, an inn. it's, yeah, it's an inn and it's historic and all of that. But um, he had a studio that he built on the side and it was just a really neat place. My mother actually grew up with his sons. So that was kind of cool. Normal, just totally normal. Nobody getting on Norman Rockwell, you know, who's that? So it really wasn't big, big, big and famous. Um, Absolutely. And until basically moved to Stockbridge in 53. Right. So he was doing all these paintings, but it didn't become big until after, until that. after that. And this is me at the Covered Bridge. My husband and I made a trip there a couple of years ago, and I was just so amazed that the Covered Bridge was still standing and in really, really good condition. Um, and it's just a famous portrait, a place to take a picture. Karen, you said you didn't even realize the fences. No, because when, well, when we were kids, we would swing off a awesome yeah. rope off the roof. Off the roof. And you remember that? Off and oh, yeah. And how old is the back of the rope? Oh, it's like 50s, 40s, 50s. In 50s. the summer, it's mm -hmm. like cold, refreshing, but it's like 52 degrees. Mm -hmm. And you always mm -hmm. remember. We always remember. Mm -hmm. So, Jenny, Chris, the so Jenny McKee. Um, she was born in Brooklyn, New York, actually lived in Florida, New York, married Harvey and moved to West Arlington to run the McKee Farm. And then after the death of Harvey in 1945, she uh, lived in a four room apartment, like right next to my grandfather, uh, Clifford McKee, until she died. She was very good at uh, quilting, making rugs. And this is one of her quilts here that she made. And I just took a piece of it and made a hanging out of it because it was falling apart. So I have lots of different pieces of it. But uh, and Krista, but yeah, you were right. She was great enough to um, you. You gave Krista, Karen, and I a piece too. Right, so you put that in a frame. frame yeah. But how old is that, Krista? Well, it's gotta be yeah, fifties, yeah, fifties or forties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that room right next to my grandfather's house, when we were growing up as kids, we would sneak in that room to see Grandma, great grandma Jenny. And we would go in there and we'd play in there and Clifford could never find us, remember? Yes, she she was a little feisty little thing. She like was maybe all of five feet. I would say maybe five feet. Yeah. 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 Maybe five feet. Yeah. And one of the things that's quoted in her obituary is there are plenty of things to do in my hometown without traveling afar. So once she got to Vermont, she stayed there. Um, oh, she really didn't want to come back to New York. And we don't really know how they met, but I'm assuming she came from a little bit of money, I think, I think so in too. New York. Yeah. And I think her family would take vacations to West Arlington, Vermont. And that's how she met my great grandfather. Oh. So, okay. <laughs> it's not I'm doing it. So basically this morning, we're going to talk about the Amazing Seven. And of course, we think they're the Amazing Seven because it's from our perspective, because they're our great grandparents. Um, of course, Norman Rockwell had wonderful paintings, but these seven we're going to really talk about today because we think that they're some of the most important ones. Your museum here is very lucky because you got the most important one that we love the most. It's the gossips in 1990. So that our great grandmother is doing that in photo. So in that painting. So we're going to talk about Karen's going to take it away. So this is the blacksmith boys. And um, this was a scene to capture for all uh, to, to see what really happens when they're making shoes, when they're doing anything dealing with iron. I'm going to put, I'm going to put the words up, Karen, and then I'll okay. come back to the picture. Okay. And also show the bathroom, too. Okay. Okay. All right, so uh, this was a scene to capture uh, the excitement of the townspeople as they finished shoe after shoe uh, and it dropped to the floor. So this is pretty awesome that they would have competitions and just like shearing sheep, you're shoeing uh, horses, but you are making the shoes. Uh, the blacksmith profession, uh, profession's future may have been in danger and there may have even been a few cars uh, parked outside. Um, and why is that? They're, they're waiting because this was a yearly thing. Oh, okay, so okay. they're just so excited to get in to see the competition. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Rockwell preserved the moment when the town blacksmith was summoned. 
against all the newcomers coming in and walk down to the boards on winter day to see him defend the town's crime. So it was pretty awesome. They would pit uh, one person against another. Um, and then we have Harvey in this painting, but he's in it twice. So you'll see him here in the front left. And um, he is just the, the, the expression because maybe his guy is winning or maybe his guy is losing, I'm not sure. Do you see him waving the money there? And then he's in, so he's got some money on it. Um, just look at all of the expressions of the people, all of the expressions, like the way that Norman Rockwell just <laughs> caught everybody's natural expressions of this competition. And Harvey's in this again. This is my great grandfather. He's in this again. Can anybody pick him out? Oh, in the back with the hat. In the back with the hat. So, mm -hmm. oh, back way back here. Yes, no, they no, actually it's not funny to ask that. To yeah. say that. Farther. So this guy here with the hat. Yeah. He that Norman Rockwell liked my great grandfather's mustache so much. He would put it on other people. <laughs> so he actually put it on. This is a neighbor. And he put it on the neighbor's face. And the neighbor was like, what's going on? I just, it looks good. Just go with it. <laughs> no, but um, that, so, keep, keep looking, because he's up there again. So he's in there again. He's, he's actually not looking at you. And he's not looking at the, And he's not looking at the um at the guys. He's looking straight across. Yeah. This is him right here. And so, this time he got rid of the mustache. Yeah. Yeah, so it's so, and Norman Rockwell's known for doing that. He's known for putting himself in this. Oh, can anybody find Norman? Norman? Can you find this one? I do. I do. I'm the next one. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, so. Okay. All right, so Norman Rockwell's in this. He's got a hat on. He's actually looking at you. Right here. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. 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 Okay, so so he Norman Rockwell had so much fun putting this all together. There you go. And he's oh, just um so he appears in the same picture to the right. The man in the derby hat was another neighbor that he put his mustache on. And uh, many times he ran out of models, so he put himself in there. And so it's kind of neat to see. But one thing that that um my great grandfather was quoted as saying, and Jenny also, is that um uh, he would take one model and just draw that. And then he'd take another model. He didn't always have everybody together. As a matter of fact, most times he didn't have everybody together. He would put them in yeah. as they He's also so very good. famous for taking photographs, or he had a photographer, and that would help him with his right. paintings as well. Because you can't imagine all these people sitting for a photograph for a painting. Yeah. No, it would be pretty awesome. Especially, Especially in 1940. He would take, he would take a top, like, photograph, and then yeah. he would sketch it, yeah. and then he would paint it. Yeah, and then and then change people if you want to change people. Absolutely. Yeah. And you'll see we have so many um, articles and books up here for you to browse around later. And then the last oh, picture. Sorry. Uh, was there one from outside? <laughs> yes, over ahead. Okay, okay, so this was outside yeah. coming in. So this is what it might have looked like. Um, just everybody waiting in line to see, to get in there, to see the, the blacksmiths complete. And so he actually drew that. I don't think that was ever painting. It was a no, it's just a sketch. But just a really neat idea of what it might have seemed like. And they well, packed them in. They packed them in, and everybody was betting, and the money was flying around. And I don't know who won that. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. So that is the blacksmith shop. Next is the fiddler. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the fiddler, but this actually was not a Saturday evening post cover. This was an advertisement. Can anybody tell me what do you think this was an advertisement for? Beer. 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 Valentine beer. Which they still make. You can't find it everywhere. Can't find it. And I'll go back and fix it in a minute. So, say that again. What? I'm sure. <laughs> like Natty Light? Like Natural Light? Like that? I don't know. It's a Valentine beer. It's a Valentine beer. So Norman Rockwell worked with more than 150 companies to create imaging for advertising purposes over the course of his career. And he produced this present example for the P. Valentine and Sons Brewing Company, originally from around where I'm from, from Long Island, but originally from Newark, New Jersey. Harvey, Norman Rockwell's neighbor, became the model, again, because of his distinctive mustache. So go back, look at that mustache. Yeah. And then. Also, I want to point out something else that I realized. The girls, I just want to say this to you. Look at his eyes. I know. What color are they, Cassidy? Who has blue eyes in our family, Cat? 
<laughs> Almost the whole family, twin boys, the kids, and, yeah, her, and, and Krista. And my and green and green here, but Krista. Krista and my grandson, who just turned 17 months old, has great grandpa's obviously. Now, we're not sure if he actually could play the fiddle. Yeah. Nowhere did it ever say that Harvard could play the fiddle. And I'm not sure in this picture that he actually could play the fiddle because the strings are all kind of broken. But look at his hands. Look at his hands. Look at his hands. Look at his hands. Probably, yeah. Remember, he was a farmer. So look at those hands. Look at how sturdy they are, how strong they are. And you know, my grandfather, our grandfather, who we were around a lot growing up, had the same rough hands. hands. Yeah, rough hands. The same hands. They rough. were farmers. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Next painting. This is my great grandma. This is Jenny. And this is this came to us just recently. We really didn't realize that this was um, Aunt Ella takes a trip. It was painted in 1942, and Great Grandma Jenny is the woman there, um, you know, uh, carrying the wagon, wheeling the wagon. And so there's some interesting things. I'm going to show you the uh, the words first, and then we'll go back. This assignment Rockwell's was for the Ladies' Home Journal. It was a magazine back in the 40s. And Rockwell frequently used live models or photographs to guide him in his work. And for this painting, he used a story by Mar Marceline Cox, Aunt Ella Takes a Trip. It's actually a childhood memoir in which the main character, Elizabeth, describes her aunt, okay? Aunt Ella was beautiful in my eyes, she says, not too tall and a lovely plump front. <laughs> you knew somehow that she had grown up on sunshine and good times and lots of Irish loving. So of course, Norman Rockwell knew who to go to. Go to Grandma Jenny. Jenny could fit the bill for this. Norman Rockwell has been quoted as saying, I found the right model to capture the whole story. She has an upright posture, determined gaze, but the double chin belies her soft-hearted generosity. Yes, Jenny, that was my great-grandmother for sure. And come to find out this story on Elitech's trip is really not great literature. However, the illustrator Norman Rockwell tried to create the picture to have a life of its own. So I looked up on Marcelina to see Ed Cox, and she is a fan. She's got a lot of quotes, very famous um, uh, author, but we cannot find on Ella Takes Trip. I no. can't find that story. No, I went back. If any of you can find it, tell my yeah, yeah, no. and, uh, <laughs> I'm sure it's a short story. I'm sure yeah, it's I'm by curious. Elizabeth, yeah. the young girl. It might be in the women's home, ladies. I don't know she can try. You can go amazing. back to the ladies' home journal. Back yeah, to the I, I tried. tried. I tried. Yeah. It's disappeared. Like, it's so funny how like how we got trying to get on it and, and love and see her. But this is we we just recently found out that this was not our great grandma. Because she takes on a different look in many of the paintings. You'll see Norman Rockwell will sometimes make her face thinner, sometimes make it plump, give her that double chin. Okay, Cameron. Yep, that's me. Karen All right, Sheridan Prisoner 1940. This is probably the first one that uh, that I remember as a kid. Um, my great grandfather posing, and um, it, it is an awesome story. Just just looking at this, it's a great story because um, you could think that maybe he's got a cold, or or look at the prisoner. What's the prisoner doing? <laughs> he's playing the harmonica. So maybe that he's sad. He's sad because the prisoner is uh, singing a sad tune or um, playing a sad tune. Um, the, that he's leaning back. It doesn't look like it's a, it's a real tough sheriff job, um, you know. And then the dog chained to the, you know, listening to the music, maybe in chains. Um, cell three boy playing the harmonica. Could he be playing a sad song? Uh, hit a chord with the, with the sheriff. Maybe he's playing the sheriff's sweetheart's favorite song. Either way, the sheriff is moved to tears. And so, yeah, this this was an, an easy one for Norman Rockwell to actually draw um, because my grandfather had that. My grandfather had that look, you know, just lean back, be, you know, look like you're sad or whatnot. Um, but but he posed for this uh, very very hurt, and I don't know if you can notice a slumping left shoulder. Uh, but he and a, and a swollen hand. Did you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Swollen hand, slumping shoulder. Um, come to find out, the morning that he was going to post this, he got into a little skirmish with some people because he was trying to protect a woman who was in a 
um, was in a shop or yeah. house, mm -hmm. and the guys were maybe giving um, her a hard time. Her, giving her a hard time, and so he went off and you know called up and mailed them, and uh, hurt his hand, and then they must have got a punch in because he had a dislocated shoulder and he had a swollen hand, probably broken, and he said, "No, I'm fine. I'm fine. I can post. I can totally post this." So, so how awesome is that? that? Just, um, when he showed up the model, he noticed about this one left hand. You can see it. He also had a broken collarbone. Um, some men had beaten him as he attempted to rescue a girl in his room chat. He decided to go ahead and pose with his hand swollen, and Rockwell captured every detail. So pretty, pretty awesome. I, you know, it's the day of the life, and that's what Rock, Rockwell wanted to, to paint in his American illustrations. Day of the life. This is just a little bit fun. Um, pretty cool. And that is a cover of the Saturday Evening Post. So you might you might know this one. Yeah. So this one. This is great for Jen. Go it's ahead. It's a homecoming. Um, this is this is you can sure this is a home because the people were glad to see him. His mother's face is positively luminous. When Rockwell painted this in 1945, homecoming GI redhead artist Edgerton was at its center, but the painter didn't stop here. He also turned to everyone in the essential characters and to redheads as well. So everybody in the painting are redheads. Even our great grandmother. And my great grandmother is there with the open arms. And I always said, Krista, it's you. Stand up. That's you. Look at her. She's very, very sweet. You are. Yeah, that's a great. That's a great painting. Go ahead, Krista. And this painting was also in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's very, you know, it's a very famous painting. Um, captured every emotion of this painting. Uh, the first person we notice um, is the soldier home and his sweetheart, the girl to left behind, the girl he left behind. Okay, go back. She was waiting. Oh. So the one in the blue. Oh. Right here there. in the blue. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. She's patiently waiting because she knows this isn't her time. <laughs> um, so she was waiting to see him. Um, he is doing a valid job of concentrating on his family when we know he really wants to help his sweetheart, I'm sure. So let's go back. Who's he concentrating on? His mom. Um, um, now, one other thing I want to point out to you, Chris. It's a normal house. It's a normal house. It's a normal house. It's a normal house. It's a city, though. It's a city. Yeah. You know, the boys are playing in the trees. I yeah. honestly, Chris. This wasn't this wasn't supposed to depict Vermont. This is New York, probably somewhere yeah. in the city. Yeah. But Crystal, look what's on the door. We talked about that. Yes, and the star on the door. Yep. That's Do you guys know what the star represents? That's a marine yes. or a uh, yes. military. 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 So if you have somebody in, in the war time, you have to put a star on your door. I mean, you got you got someone working on the roof. So that's his actual well, son working on the roof. <coughs> now we're painting with red hair. And um, Norman Rockwell's in this. Yeah, yeah. Where in the world, right? It's Where is Norman Rockwell? He is in this because once again, he's in the doorway. He's in the doorway. Yeah, that's him in the doorway. That's the dad. Yeah. So or or. Um, he's, he's not in all. No, he's not in all. Yeah. Yeah. But he tries to people. Before Where's Waldo came out, it was Where's Norman. Yes. Yeah. 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 He didn't even know about Waldo. Yeah. Now, Krista, there's one more thing that's important about this. Go ahead. So the painting was selected as the U.S. Treasury official poster for their eighth and final war bond. So in '46, at the end of the war bond campaign, eight one hundred and eighty-seven billion had been raised. So that's a lot. It's a lot of money. That's a lot of now the Edgertons were the ones that posed a primary life with the Edgerton kids. So there it's, it's the girl in blue, his sister, the, the guy up in the in the yellow. And I remember Pat, huh? Our yeah. Pat yeah. talked about the Edgertons all the time. Yeah. All the time. The Edgertons were this and then that. So he, if you pose, of course you don't want to be this. No, it wasn't famous. You just they came went off out. the field and went to Paris in the studio, and then went back, and it wasn't any big deal. Of course, now if they're still Edgertons alive, they're like, oh my god, just like us. That's my great grandmother. That's my great grandfather. So I spoke so to Buddy Edgerton a few years ago. Yeah, and he was he was old then, and he had written a book. I was going to bring the book up for that book, but anyway, he's got a lot of good memories too. It's yeah. we can't have him. It's pretty cool. <laughs> The dress is green for the girl. Yes. It changed color. Yeah, it actually was green. green. Yeah. It was green. I don't know why. Yeah. It might have just been uh, yeah. blue there. 
Yeah, but it, it Pat, wait, where did you find that? Maybe they put it on the homecoming? Even in this one, it's green. In the article, um, that it says blue. They may have changed it when they the bonds. They changed a lot of colors. Yeah, they yeah. did. Yeah. It's definitely more yeah. luminous yeah. and more vibrant here. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. the other one seems more patriotic. Yes. yes. Right. Exactly. Right. 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 And you can even see Norman quite right. clearer right. in this one. Yeah. Always yeah. with his pipe, too. Yeah. He did when he painted. And our grandfather, Clifford, smoked a pipe. Was what they did. Do you know how he smoked a pipe? I'm sorry. Oh, I don't know. I am sorry. And I just remember Pop had a um, lip, his lip went down for the pipe right now. And he had a tooth there. Perfect. 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 Okay, the charwoman. This happens to be one of my favorites. Um, I think it's one of my favorites. It was the Saturday Evening Post cover in 1946. And I, I think it's one of my favorites because it puts Grandma Jenny back where she grew up back in New York in the theater. As you can see, um, Norman Rockwell was quoted as saying, curiosity, wonder, and love of the arts, they're in the theater. They're in the, majestic, the majestic theater in New York City. No, I made you look up. I said, I thought it was chairwoman. Oh, char, oh, char, char, and I didn't know what that meant. Oh. So I had to look it up, and you're gonna tell us. You tell us. Um, so a charwoman is just a person who might clean a business or an office, one or two days a week as opposed to a maid that will come in and clean every day. So a charwoman, that was the definition. And I think, I know that, that I, we didn't know. And I think that's why before they modeled for this painting, great, great Grandma Jenny was not happy. She didn't want to be known as a clean lady. And they had some words with Norman. I'll tell you about that story. <laughs> The ladies in question were well-respected neighbors of the artist. It was Jenny, our great-grandmother, and Mrs. Charles Profit. And they had reservations about posing as cleaning ladies, but Rockwell convinced them they were only acting and that they were good sports about it afterward. Once he told them, it was only a story. It's not, you're not really going to be known as a cleaning lady. They were okay with it. And they were delighted with the results and said they would pose any time of an argument. <laughs> now, a little side story, a little sidebar. I always tell my students that. Sidebar, which I love to find out about. He went to the Majestic Theater, Norman, in New York City, and he wanted to photograph and sketch the theater. Because, of course, he couldn't bring Grandma Jenny and Mrs. Crowfoot to New York. And so he was doing all the measurements, the specifics of the seating arrangements, and all of a sudden, the director came out and said, Sir, what is going on? What are you doing here? And he said, Oh, no, no, I'm just taking some pictures I'm going to be painting. And they didn't know who Norman Rockwell was. <laughs> and the guy said, That would be $40. <laughs> And he was like, $40 to keep the lights on at that time. That was a lot of money. So Jenny and Mrs. Crowfoot were great friends, and together they exhibited curiosity about that evening's performance. We often say, did they ever get a chance to attend the show? I don't know. I'm thinking, my great-grandmother, she, once she got to Vermont, she stayed there. She probably didn't go back into Manhattan. So I'm pretty sure they didn't go to that show. But the Crowfits, we grew up with the kids, the green kids. Yeah. So we remember, no. A stone, a stone flow. Yeah. Yeah. Stone. As the crow flies. As the crow flies. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. Right near the bridge they live. Yeah. So that's one of my favorite paintings right there. Okay, the gossips. This is the one that you have upstairs that we're going to take a look at in a few minutes. So this is one of our favorites, I think. All of us. Chris, go profile, Chris. Um, come on, Chris, go profile. <laughs> My great grandmother is the one in the gray hat. Up there. Second row. Yeah. Second row. So yeah, one's there. And these are some of the sketches that um, Norman Rockwell did before he painted it. Go ahead, Chris. It says some people say the painting was a, re a Rockwell's revenge on the women in Arlington, Vermont, who spread an ugly rumor about him. <laughs> He recreated the life of the rumor, beginning with an elderly woman whispering, whispering about Rockwell to a neighbor. And from that tale, takes winning speeding through the town, one eager gossip to the next, until it comes back to Rockwell himself. Who confronts the rumor. So here he is. Okay, he finally confronts the rumor. Well, I love this guy's face, though. Who knows what yeah. was said? You guys have all played television. Come on. Yeah. By the end of the thing, you don't know what's going on. Norman Rockwell here in Boy, is he mad? Boy, is he mad? So, just curious to know, I'm curious to know what was, even if it was just a jest, what was, what was it that they were gossiping about? about? Right. So thousands of letters were sent to the Saturday evening folks asking what the gossip was, <laughs> and we never know the answer. And we asked our grandfather, we asked our mother, come on, mom, what was it about? No, they didn't know. No. 
And maybe Governor Rockwell didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, it must have started by some something someone said because he was angry. It does say that. Yeah. Yeah. That's why he decided. And you know what? If you know anything about West Arlington, Vermont, the small town there was, everybody knew everybody's yeah. business. You knew who was going in for surgery. You know who didn't milk the cow that morning. You know who didn't go to school. Someone saw me for something. Yeah, you just knew. Yeah. And even growing up, Someone when we would go to Vermont yeah. every summer, we knew everything that was going on. Yeah, they knew we were coming. They knew we were coming. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So here's some sidebars, some things about the party line that I don't know spreading gossip if you know about it or not. It was big up in New England, where I come from in New York. I just mentioned some of my colleagues the other day. They're like, Nessa, what are you talking about the party line? Oh, I grew up in New York. I remember. You remember party line? Right? I remember. 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 I so each yeah. home was given a position on the party line, being designated a certain number of rings. One ring, two rings, three rings, and we go ding, 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 yeah. ding, ding, ding. Mm -hmm. And then uh, some rings were long, some were short, so it sounded a little bit like Morse code. Uh, and whenever the phone rang, everyone would stop to see whose call it was. So, <laughs> so we'd be eating dinner, and the phone would ring, bam, bam, and, and I go, like, wow, get it. And he's like, don't let the answer. answer. Oh, no, that's your profit. That's not ours. And Krista, how many times did I go over to the phone and pick it up? Yeah. 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 We well, wanted to see what was going on. The yeah. But it was so weird. And then we'd go home to our regular phone line. <laughs> yeah. So this was still in existence in 1970. Yeah. Oh, my grandma. Yeah. 1970. 60s and 70s. 60s and 70s. So everyone knew who was getting a call because everyone would memorize everyone's rank. Because God forbid you pick my grandmother, Marion, would say, oh, girls, don't touch that. If you were on the party line, the line was unavailable to everyone else. Mm -hmm. And here's the kick. And Norman Rockwell knew this. Anyone and everyone could listen to the call. <laughs> so to be fair, sometimes you accidentally miscounted the rings. Of course, that's what we did, but we were growing up with them. But more often than not, if you were on the phone and you heard a click, yeah. then that would let you know that someone else was listening. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you didn't say anything. You didn't want anybody else to know. But then you go back to Clifford and say, "Great, did you know?" No, oh, yeah. So the question I want to ask you: Is it polite to eavesdrop? <laughs> yeah. It was that. So, did, so Claire, I don't know if you were saying, did you remember party line at all with your dad? Or? Not the party line. I yeah. just remember somehow being able to hear other people's conversations. I don't. I don't know how we did that. Right. So well, it's so, so interesting. Yeah. So some interesting tidbits, Karen, take a look. Uh, Norman Rockwell captured the simple and ordinary in the American way of the life through decades. Um, so he caught people's expressions and faces in sorrow, in happiness, in awe, in shock. Um, he always elicited some sort of emotion from his onlookers. Models may have received $5 for a few hours. We don't ever remember our great grandparents getting anything at all. So we think that prior to his move in 1953 to Stockbridge, that when he was just you know painting uh, and drawing the townsfolk of West Arlington, they were just doing it just to be nice. simple folk. You know, yeah, Arlington, Vermont. So and five dollars, like might have been a lot, you know. But, but I think they that came years later. Yeah, yeah, after yeah. 53. Um, he couldn't help but create a warm, wonderful feeling amongst his models and friends from West Arlington, Vermont. And um, I, I do know this, that um, after, well, probably about 15, 20 years ago, they turned the church that our parents got married to yeah. into a Norman Rockwell Museum. So our parents are married in this little, cute little um, uh, chapel. And it's, it's now, well, no, now, it's, now it's even it's something else. Okay. It's closed so again. And now it's um, in West Arlington, um, or Arlington, there's a place called Sugar Shack, and that's where the museum is now. Oh, okay. Okay. Is in there. So they moved it off the church. Yes. Yeah. Oh, church is closed. I church is closed. Sean and I went there too. Yes. So you can buy syrup and see. Yeah, and you can see your mom. Yes. Yes. Very yes. yes. cool. Um, Go ahead. Okay. So I guess at this time we want to take your questions because um, you know we had a lot of fun researching. Um, we definitely, my grandfather, oh, and I do want to end this way, that um, our grandparents were very, that's it, 
Yeah, just just a simple picture. Like it's just a pair of That is my husband's mustache. My husband's mustache. My husband has his mustache. So Tom, you should have come today. It is. That's true. It's it's true. It's true. true. But I do want to say that while Norman Rockwell was painting the townsfolk of West Arlington, he treated them well. He was very good to them. And when he left West Arlington to go to Sturbridge, Stop. Why are you leaving? Stop. 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 Why are you leaving? And that sometimes didn't hit a good accord with everybody. We don't have any original paintings, <laughs> dirty, unfortunately. But we but do have a lot of book. materials up here. Very right? old and this book of Norman Rockwell. Um, Krista, this was in mom's stuff. And so it's 1954, this copy is. And it was given to my great grandma from my mother. So, you know, this is her book. So, this is, you know, it's got a lot of great things. Um, my mother kept, you know, articles so and things. Like so, so. no, 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 she just wrote articles. articles. It's a book of Norman Rockwell, yeah. But mom put anything she found in Norman Rockwell, she put in there. So, so it was given to my mother. Yeah. Well, because then we have a, a, a more modern one. Right, 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 but not the original. Not that, that, well, not yeah. one of but you researched a lot of stuff on the Bennington. I, I went Bennington. on the Bennington banner when Kat asked us to come and do this. I said, well, I need a little bit more information about Grandma Jenny, and I was able to find her obit. And, and then they, they, they um, did a tribute to her when she turned to well, this, and that's, that's the original of the newspaper. And it was interesting to read all of the She yeah. loved being Norman Rockwell's model. I don't think Harvey loved it as much as she did. But again, he died very young. He was 64. Uh -huh. And we don't really know what he died of, because it just says after a long illness. We have some pictures up here that my sister found of um, Jenny and Harvey in younger years. I don't think we did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's so funny. It's like, yeah, who knows? They could be 40. I don't know. Uh, and then uh, my pop. And, and his brother, Robert, uh -huh. and in the first car that they ever had. So but they worked at a farm. So yeah, they did. And my father, my grandfather actually was a um, he worked construction and he built into this day, it's still standing, um, the lodges at um, uh, Stratton Mountain mm -hmm. and Bromley. And he was so proud to say, I built that lodge at Bromley. I built that Bromley. His, his Stratton might be different now because his hands were just like his father's old oh, yeah. hands. We always said that he yeah. had those strong hands. So, How many um, years was Norman Rockwell in? So he left in 53 and he he wasn't born there. No. So he moved there when the kids were little. I'm going to go with probably 20 years. 20 years. Maybe. maybe. Oh, that's, that's, that's the math because I think it was 1940. Yeah. Okay. After 53, so maybe 13 years. He started painting when he was young. Yes. Yeah. But. Um, I'm not. He wasn't there 20 years. Because no, there were his, his first studio burned down. Right. And then he built another one. Right. So he didn't want to stay there, I guess. You know, yeah. if you haven't been to West Arlington, take a trip up Route 13, go to the Baton Hill River, see the, the beautiful the Sherry Shack. and yeah. the Sugar Shack. And if you haven't been to Stockbridge, please, you gotta go. Because yeah. it is amazing. The yes. curator there is really nice too. What's his name? Kat? Um, no, no, no. <laughs> they might be able to pay out a little bit. Of after 1953, good. I'd love sure. I was raised in Lenox, Massachusetts. Oh, and, I think I can you. Yeah. and um, over the years, um, I got to know Norman Rockwell. He used to attend Tanglewood on Sundays oh, and okay. park in the, um, I forgot the name of it a lot now, but it was where certain people could park, the box lot. Okay. And every Sunday he would come in with his family on Sunday so he could make it. And we'd help him set up his lunch and all that stuff. And then just before the concert would start, we'd pack his car back up for him. And he'd always hand us a basket for our lunch. Nice. Um, and, uh, further, um, the girl I went to high school with, his father was his photographer, black and white photographer. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, his last name was Lamone, I think, Louis Lamone. And, um, he might even be in that book. So we got to know Norman through that and then the business. And then um, my best friend's grandfather posed as Santa Claus 
in 1967. I think I'm feeling Circle Magazine. Magazine, yeah. Is that the famous it, one from? He's got the Santa Claus with the uh, space helmet. Oh, oh okay. I think okay. it's 60, I think it's 67. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just looked it up yesterday, so you think I remember it. But, um, that's nice. That's nice you have that good memory. What do you remember at, uh, about him as a person, Norman? Walking down the street and say hello. Say hello. Yeah. 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 Great. The, the postmaster for Lennox posed as the astronaut on Life Magazine, the cover of Life Magazine, stepping on the moon mm -hmm. in 69. And um, I don't know how familiar you are with uh, the main street of Stockbridge. Oh, yeah, we are. Yeah. 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 A, a, a painting. And then if you look at the painting in the right hand back corner, there's a red building, and that used to be his art gallery or his um, studio yeah. before they moved to the, the new the new, new museum yeah. site. Um let's see. Yeah, my grandfather would talk about Norman Rockwell coming to borrow a cup of sugar or having a cup of coffee with him. You know, it's just a normal guy, just walking down the street and you know, yeah, yeah, having a cup of coffee. Yeah, exactly. And they would often talk about farming because my grandfather was a farmer. Yeah. So yeah. they would often do that. Are you looking that up, Karen? Yeah. But yeah. I think this is a part of the thing that. Is that one? Oh, okay. Yes. No, no. No, no. Okay. No. Okay. I'm positive it's 1967. Okay. December is your answer. So, do you have any questions for us? I it was, have one more. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, one more. Did you say your last name was Clark? Cat, oh, Clark. 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 <laughs> in Lennox, I used to deliver groceries to a farm whose people's last name were Clark. Oh. So when you first said it, I think, oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think the Stockbridge um, Museum has had um, programs with, with other people who were models. Yes, yes, yes. 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 They have too. Yes. They have. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think about a year and a half ago. It was pre it was pre-COVID. Pre-COVID, an exhibit came to New York City. It went, it, I think it came to the MoMA, and my husband yeah. and I went in, and we were walking around. And of course, I had my Norman Rockwell book, and I had Grandpa, Grandpa Chani, Grandpa, Grandpa Harvey with me. And I was walking around, and I saw the sheriff one, the original, because they had it. And I was going like this, and everybody came around me, and I go. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. They got quite a few pictures of that. But they did have a model reunion, I think, yeah. in West Arlington, Vermont, not too long ago. Uh -huh. And it's funny because I, I wanted to go to that, but I think I had plans or something. Mm -hmm. So there would have been. Chris, how many models would be alive now? Though? They're they're grandchildren. Grandchildren. Yeah. 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 And the later faces, you know, the, the, yeah. the right. ones, the kids, the kids. kids. There were kids. Well, they were just discussing the the West Arlington. West Arlington. just models. He had to start yeah. somewhere, and that's where he chose. Yeah. Right. Well, and my my um, information is my sister is a furniture refinisher, and she lives in Massachusetts. And um, years ago, when she got out of the army, she worked for a man named Michael Bloom, who was a woodworker in Groton, Mass. Okay. And they worked on the frames for the Four Freedoms that oh, are in the gallery of the Stockbridge Museum. So yeah. that's, that's kind of great neat. memories of that. That's she awesome. said when they, uh, they, they were so large that they had to hang them off the balcony. To sand and re in, into all the yeah, those are amazing. Catherine, yeah. and that's yeah. a very good friend of my grandfather. Right. Right. So when I was in fourth grade, I had to do a project on a, a, like an interview, and so I asked my grandfather if I could do Mr. Hess, uh, who stood for the freedom of speech, and he said, "Sure, yeah, come on up." So we, we made a field trip up to West Stafford, uh, West Arlington, and. I interviewed him and it was so awesome. And I'm trying to I was trying to look for my fourth grade project. I know, can't find it. But but it was awesome. Uh, he was such a uh, laid back guy. He ran, believe it or not, a gas station called Hess, but not related to the big S that's you know the trucks and everything. Um, but he was a farmer and then he bought this piece of property and he said, I'm gonna I'm gonna put gas, we're gonna put one pump in, and his wife Marjorie ran the pump for 25 years. And then uh, Amazing. our grandfather worked at the and gas station. Even when he was the one gas station, 85 years old, yeah. he still worked yeah. at the gas station. down there and talked to people and talked about coffee. And, 
Uh, but Mr. Hess, uh, he who stood for and he had a totally different shirt on. They talked about politics, but not much about politics when when he um, when he was posing. Um, uh, Norman wanted to put a different shirt on him, so, and then, so he's just painted a different color. But it was so cool, like it was just casual. And all right, I bet you they know. He didn't know how important. No, 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 it's just amazing. Yeah. Just, just, so that was that was really cool. Can't find that fourth grade project. <laughs> You'll find. I was looking for it. It's in the garbage. But <laughs> please go up and see the exhibit upstairs too. Sure. Oh, um, it's on the second it. floor. Right, second floor? Yep, yeah, second floor. Yeah. Um, um, Crystal will do a side promo. Come on, I swear she looks like her. Yes, question. Yes. Does anybody online have questions? Yes, from, no. the, from the chat. This one's very specific. I love that. Does the Norman Rockwell store on 7A in Arlington have any of these pictures with your great grandfather? Um, so in, in Arlington? Yes. Not, 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 and I think Joanne is on today. Some of our relatives from Vermont are on today. Billy's on, Joanne's on. Who else is on? We also have cousins on that side. Gary McKee. Gary McKee is on. Hi, Gary. Hi, Gary. Yeah, yeah. Gary. So this is the freedom of speech. And when he painted this, um, uh, he just did Mr. Hess. And then he put in all the other characters uh, afterwards. Yeah. Was on the, and it had a different jacket and a different shirt sure. about the j jacket. Yeah, yeah. I, think it was, I remember. Is it a zipper or a button? It's a button, but yeah. it, what it what it was maybe a zipper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And kind of shirt sure was zipper. different. He originally had a striped shirt from this way, and he changed it. But yeah, he looks really lonely. Any more questions on the chat on the Zoom? Nope, no one. No one chat. Okay. We'll one right here. Go ahead. When you were, um, did you have all this information or did you have to like use the internet? Like, was it all like in your minds that you figured all this out? Sometimes I have a lot of the, I, I like Norman Rockwell, I like the paintings, so I have quite a few of my great grandparents' paintings, you know, hanging in my house. So I really enjoyed Norman Rockwell, seeing Norman Rockwell, and I have a lot, I have a lot of books. Norman Rockwell, and I think my sisters do too. We have books. She majored in art in college. So I mean, I just enjoy, I enjoy it. But then she did a lot of research. You I know I have to go into the back. Going to Benny's and Bear, and I remember Pop talking about, it, but I don't yeah. remember the specifics. So I said, let me go to the Benny's and Banner. I used that as my research, and I said, let me look up her obituary. Oh, they had a party for her when she was ninety. I might have been at that party. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then my said, we all had books like I. I don't yeah, know. So again, anywhere we go, I actually we always congregate. I was here and I picked up a Norman Rockwell book. Crystal will say, Unless you have that book. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have a double of that. But, uh, something else. So, so I don't have that picture. Oh, is that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I don't know if that's, one. One. that's yeah. the one I did show. Yeah. I would love to get that Ella one. Yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, we didn't find it. Yeah. What a jolly man. Ella takes a trip. Ella takes a trip. So that's another painting that I'd be able to do more research on. Because I don't know where that painting is. I've never seen it. Great. The library of Congress. Yeah, I came across it. Which one? Ella takes a trip. Yeah, that one. The other thing we the other thing we started to research was we know that Norman Rockwell, some of his um, sketches and paintings for on US postage stamps. So we went to look that up and we did some research and uh, not not great grandma. Four freedoms. Not great grandma, right? Yeah, yeah. freedom no, and none of our great our great grandma and uh, uh, that was that well, the homecoming. Yeah, that was the homecoming. There was another homecoming one where the where the um, uh, soldier is in the middle of a gas station and there's all the guys around him and he's talking about them. That's that. later on. And that was a, that was the same. Did we answer your question? Now, the internet you asked about yeah. the, is that did we answer it? Did we answer it. Yeah, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. And no one was having fun. When you have, when you've invested some time into it and you know they're your relatives, you can do yeah. Don't. yeah. I mean, even though we're teachers and we like doing it anyway, but when you know it's your relative, it's just something special. Yeah. And Vanessa, you did really pull, take the reins and, and do yeah. a lot of research. Well, one of us had to. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited being the oldest. I got to do all this. Yeah, stuff. you're newly really retired. So, you know. yeah, so I am sort of retired. I'm a middle child. <laughs> the one that looks like. This is the first time you've done a first Yes. 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 As a matter of fact, funny that you say that because we put it out on our on our um, social media. That Catherine sent us this cute little thing with Krista pointing to the gossips and um, we put it out. And I have several friends who are teachers and two of them are, are our teachers. 
And they said, I don't know if I ever mentioned to you about Norman Rockwell, did I? No, I don't. I, I, I was surprised. I was like, and I've been there 35 years and I was a teacher and I, my friends were all like, you've never, you've never told us this. This is amazing. Yeah. And I go, oh, well, you know, I lived in Dunning, Florida when Catherine was little. We lived in Dunning, Florida, and they did have a Norman Rockwell a talk in the library one time. And I did go and speak about it, but, you know, that was many years ago. Yeah. No, we, have, we were very fortunate that Kat was able to be able to bring this exhibit to Mattata. And then Kat said, I have an idea, guys. And we were like, okay, what's your idea? <laughs> she kind of hoped us in. She said, can you all come together? Presentation. Okay. All right. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. <laughs>